So, ladies and gentlemen, the last part of uh, the conference on PV module technology. Join me with an applause to welcome Mr. Deepak Jain, President Sales from Goldie Sora, Mr. Kabir Shah, Engineer R&D, Vari MGs, Mr. Bhupendra Rawat, our session chair and moderator, Head Business Development from Renewables India, Mr. Acharan Chandey, Senior Sales Manager at InShine PV Tech Company, and Mr. Praveen Handy, Marketing Manager India, Viewpoint Photovoltaic Solutions. Good evening, friends. I think uh, we have been strategically given this slot. <laughs> so I would like to thank, uh, first of all, uh, Anand, because he's a very strategic thinker. See, uh, module comprises of 60% of the total cost of a system. And uh, for a session to go throughout the day, I think he has taken, you know, at the last, so that people could stay. So I think the onus of, you know, is all on you. So please, uh, uh, bear with us for some more time. I think you know it's it's late. Also, we understand that in Bombay, being a you know uh, urban market, I think traveling is a big thing here. So please uh, give us some time. I'm sure we are going to cover it up very fast. See, I think yeah, we first all all have to uh, you know applause ourselves that you know we have today graduated and uh, we have achieved almost 10 gigawatt of manufacturing capacities in India. I think we all should give this uh, credit to Make in India, uh, you know, program. And uh, you know, because uh, uh, three years back, I think we were in the range of 1.5 to 2 gigawatt. And uh, not only solar modules, but also uh, cells. I think we have graduated from 1.2 to now today 3.5 gigawatts. And including the component level manufacturing, wherein we today have in house, uh, you know, in India, in mid supply chain of components uh, comprising of solar glass. EVA back sheet, few of uh, inti uh, you know integration uh, your uh, solar uh, uh, ribbons. So I think we have uh, quite a lot of uh, input supply chain. Uh, uh, however, we do have a big challenge that you know uh, a complete value chain in the solar uh, less than you know other than the cell. So we still are lagging. So that's definitely a challenge which we also as a Indian manufacturer face. So the biggest thing today, you know, we have seen all these sessions uh, covering up, you know, that uh, uh, Indian prices are higher and, you know, domestic manufacturers quality. I think we definitely need to cover that point and we will definitely speak about that. See, major point what uh, we need to emphasize today is that, you know, this is the only industry, this is the only product which actually people ask for 25 years of warranties. I don't think any other products you go into any industry will call for 25 years of warranty. And hence, I think reliability is one thing which we definitely will touch upon. And uh, so I think, you know, let's start the session with, uh, I, I will quickly ask people, you know, uh, in the dais to speak, uh, uh, give the introduction and speak something about, you know, what is the differentiator the company could uh, create, you know, because most, most of us are the module manufacturers out here. So, uh, if you allow, I will start with myself, you know, myself, Bhupendra Rawat. And uh, we are the first uh, integrated solar module manufacturers out of India. Way back in 2011, we started with EVA backsheet. We have 1.2 gigawatt of EVA and 3 gigawatt of backsheet. In 2015, we further uh, integrated it with cells and modules. Today, we have 750 megawatt of uh, solar modules and 130 megawatt of solar cells. Uh, see, when we talk about, uh, you know, differentiators, I think, you know, it is not only uh, the real-time testing today which is important in the solar model manufacturing. It is also the, uh, the extended life testing, which is very, very critical. Because I think the prerequisite today for a solar model manufacturer is, is a certification, which I think all of the 160 manufacturers out of India has got that. So that definitely will not differentiate because everybody is in the same platform. But it is the raw material selection which you do, it is the equipment which you have selected, it is the processes which you adopt, it is the IQC inline testing and the OQC you have, it is also uh, the extended life testing which you have, you know, possibly if you have a, uh, a, a reliability lab in house. So definitely as a company, Renusys has got all these things in house and uh, we are definitely going great and we have, you know, uh, we are looking for uh, the acceptance in the bigger bigger market which is utility. I think rooftop uh, people are already uh, acknowledging uh, our quality, but utility is the sector 
which definitely we are looking forward to uh, being a you know, top four module manufacturers in India. Thank you so much. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is Kavish Shah here, and I take care of research and development at Vari Energies. So, you know, uh, just talking about the differentiators, uh, what uh, Mr. Rupendra already pointed out, uh, one of the things, uh, one of the key factors, uh, you know, when you look on to solar module is the extended life or extended warranties. As of now, you know, no module manufacturer, no module in the field has been lasted for 25 years. So, you, re you really do not know what is going to happen. So, you know, that is where the extended life cycle or ex extended life testing would come into picture. You know, there's a study by, I think, NREL or someone which points out that IC certification only ensures that, you know, you do not, your modules do not die of infant mortality. If you have, you know, if you have seen that figure, it, it, would, it correctly points out that the IC certification only says that, you know, your module will not die out in an early stages of life. So, you really need to have that extended reliability testing, okay, that is one of the key factors what you need. Second differentiator, uh, what I could point out being uh, from a, you know, r &D guy, is that Vari Energies have been constantly coming up with new products. Uh, we do have something called a flexible solar panel. And I take, I, I really take a pride in saying that we are the only manufacturers in India who have this you know, modeling technology, which produces flexible panels, which can be installed, you know, wherever and wherever your regular modules cannot, you know, sustain. So say if you have a curved roof, if you have a vehicle, you know, uh, the magazine, what you have in your hand, the EQ magazine, if you just flip the pages and go to page number 40, you would see that, you know, Vari Energies have already launched a special segment of modules, which are, you know, only focused on EVs. So while the technology remains same, we, we are using the same technology of Merlin, what is happening is the application and the advantages of, you know, we are mixing it, mixing it with the EVs and uh, we are offering something new to the customer. Uh, also giving you a sneak peek of our latest product, uh, we have recently internally launched a 400 watt peak module. You know, and we are uh, planning, uh, Maybe with, by next month or so, you do an official launch. So this was just a sneak peek, and I thought this was a correct forum to, you know, uh, you know, give it out. So I think that's all from my side. This is Arshun from Second Shine. So Second Shine is a Chinese manufacturer, and we were uh, the largest module supplier for uh, 2018 in India, with shipments crossing more than 900 megawatts. The install base of from 1.6 gigawatt, we are uh, looking at the install base of uh, more than 2 gigawatt by end of this year. Now, uh, what we have done is separately in the rush of uh, going to, instead of going to monopod uh, like other manufacturers have known, we have stick to poly for now and we have developed a double glass with frame poly product. Uh, it is not a bifacial product, it is glass to glass but with frame. And in association with Breathing University, we have been developing our anti dust settlement coating, this is, uh, which, is, which has been named graphite coating. Uh, I guess three or four lots of modules have been just shipped to India and we will be able to analyze the results and I'll be in a better position to speak about that probably the next time we meet. Thank you. Good evening everyone. My name is Deepak Jain. I am uh, heading uh, domestic and international business for uh, Goldie Solar. Uh, we are a 500 megawatt company and uh, we are putting one more 500 megawatt as a second step and first step will be another 500 megawatt. So, uh, as rightly said by uh, Mr. Rawat, uh, every module manufacturer they have certification. They have for certification they have cert selected certain uh, CDM or uh, the raw materials. But uh, quality matters. And uh, since we are speaking about uh, 25 years of warranty, so there should be stringent quality control on raw material side as well as process and the finished product. I don't know how many uh, manufacturers they are strictly following uh, the CDF, but yes, we are known for that, and uh, that's the reason. Since 2011, whoever joined us, they are still uh, loyal to us, and we are loyal to them. Uh, we are probably the company having uh, exports also uh, year on year. We are increasing our exports since we have a quality control. That's the reason uh, there is a good acceptance in European market and now we have entered in US market as well. So, uh, 
now speaking about uh, the uh, product so uh, there are uh, means apple to apple one can compare but uh, the thing is the quality matters my name is praveen i am from uh, dupont uh, dupont is a global organization is 200 years old uh, uh, we have various businesses with a turnover of around 80 billion dollars and uh, dupont solar business is around a billion dollar uh, second thing is uh, you know globally we are one of the largest material suppliers you know that's how this a billion dollar comes in to the modular and the cell manufacturing three very critical components a silver paste which goes into the conductivity of a cell when you convert vapor from cell is made by dupont the back sheet film which is a protective layer is made by dupont and also a silicon sealant which goes to fixing the frame and the laminate plus potting and fixing the junction box is made by dupont so couple of things you know just taking out from what kavi said uh, uh one is that uh, we are not seeing modules which is done pretty five years life uh, the good news is yes uh, dupont has seen we have dupont has been here for 30 years plus uh but yeah he is also right in a commercial sense uh that you know unless you have a proper life cycle testing done you really can't assess today's technology what we are seeing is are the days where you know uh, where the the module cost was extremely high we people used to use very good below budget and those modules are even now performing 30 years plus with degradation lower than 0.4% uh, but then yeah the disclaimer is very clear you know those had very good below budget uh, today's technology highly commercialized cost bear bass and people pushing at uh, making it cheaper and cheaper day by day has compromised a lot of the modules forget about modules being there for 25 years we don't even know whether the companies will be there for 25 years you know that's the situation so uh, as upender rightly said you know it's uh, very important that you need to understand uh, a modules life through not just an iec certification uh, it's also important that uh, uh you need to have a life cycle testing done nrl is doing it you're right in fact even before nrl did dupont has uh, uh, done a, a mass you know, module accelerated sequential test where we have tried to uh, put in the 25 years of stress which see basically the stress of a module is weathering you know it's not much to do with the with the generation as such you keep the module out in the sun for 25 years there are lot of factors which go, which go into you know harming it apart from the handling side you know there may be handling issues you know the trackers may not handle it properly you know uh, the physical part but there are lot of non physical part like the ultraviolet which falls on it ultraviolet is a very powerful thing this this bottle you keep in the sun for 15 days it will crumble off you know that's a kind of impact you have a thermal cycling which happens uh, partly because of the module too uh, like peak generation in the module goes up to 60 degrees 70 degrees cell temperature okay. night it reaches ambient of about 30 degrees so every day you see a cycling 30 to 70 30 to 70 you know constant expansion and contraction you have damp heat which is more dangerous it's humidity plus heat. you know these kind of issues which keep happening so what dupont has done is collected these parameters and assessed what may happen on a, or in the field for 30 years compress it into around Four months, five months life cycle. We have done a testing on multiple module with multiple bomb. Uh, very truly, <coughs> uh, many of them failed in you know cycles in between. So only if, uh, you know modules with good bomb, including frame, including you know junction box, IP production, glass, EVA, very important. The UV, you know, the resistance of it, the cut off of it is very important. Back sheet plays a much bigger role because. 50% of the module is covered by a back sheet. Uh, that's a huge area for it to protect, and it's very thin. We are talking about 300 microns for 1,500 volts. So that's one third of a millimeter layer protects 50% of the module area. So all these become very important. That's why you know the the, the lesson goes back as Upendra uh, says: module form, good uh, production process. 
and quality assurance process during the manufacturing. These three, if it is there in place, well, I think tire one or you know other things can be uh, sort of uh, you know it, it's it's a add-on things. It's not the primary things. Thank you, Pravin. I think uh, some detailing you have given. See now, talk, uh, moving forward, I think you know uh, we have seen this industry. You know, the technology upgradation here is very, very, very much high. You know, including the obsolescence. You know, because of the technology upgradation, there is a lot of obsolescence happening here. And hence, you know, all these model, model manufacturers are basically under tremendous pressure to upgrade themselves uh, time and again. So, uh, definitely India has not been the leader in terms of manufacturing and uh, which uh, definitely was, initially it was Taiwan and now today China is leading the manufacturing bandwagon. But, uh, India definitely, definitely is catching up. And uh, so, we would like to talk about uh, technology here. I think uh, I would like to ask my colleagues uh, that you know how would technology play a role in maximizing the profits? So I would uh, like to ask uh, Deepak to throw some light on that. Uh, as an industry, we started uh, uh, using modules of 210 watts uh, in 60 cells, and year on year uh, there is a continuous R&D is going on, and uh, now we achieved sense of around 21% efficiency. So now uh, in 72 cells we can even supply to 370-380 watt modules. Uh, Mr. Mittal uh, 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 was right uh, during the day session uh, that uh, there should be uh, R&D at module level but uh, I think it should be at the cell level because module is uh, it's only the process. Uh, now, since uh, uh, efficiency is increasing uh, year on year, so uh, there is obviously uh, good generation is, is happening and that's the reason we are controlling the cost and uh, it is improving the profits. Now, uh, uh, we, historically we are using body mono, now we are using mono <coughs> uh, Also, uh, we started with two bus bar cells, now we are using five bus bar. The upcoming will be the multi-wire technology or multi bus bar technologies like 8 uh, bus bars or 12 bus bars. Mm -hmm. Then uh, apart from that, uh, there is a new uh, thing is happening which is uh, HJT shield, uh, uh, yeah, heterojunction uh, technology uh, with shielding. So uh, again, in same size, we will get uh, more than uh, 420 watt modules. So which will improve the productivity of the project and uh, again the earnings for the developer. See, what we, see, we, we saw that, you know, we have learned over the period that it is not only the solar cell which has uh, changed. Today all the other components have also changed, you know. We talk about EVA, I think people were stand, using standard cure, today they are using mega cure. In fact, uh, the bandwidth, uh, the radiation bandwidth which, you know, which you use, earlier it was uh, from 400 to 1000, now which has opened up little more uh, from 300 to uh, 1100 nanometers. So, so what has happened because of that? You know, the the, the module is able to uh, to capture more sunlight and then produce more. So, it is not uh, definitely it is majorly cell which is a generator, but there are other components also which have changed drastically. Uh, as uh, Praveen also mentioned that you know uh, in backsheet also there are a lot of things happening. In, in, in fact, in encapsulant people have moved from EV, you know, because it has to do with price. I think people, you know, have developed, like we have developed POE, which is a polyolefin elastomeric encapsulant, and there is a third generation, which is also a TPO, you know, thermoplastics. So, uh, I think a lot of uh, developments are happening, keep on happening in this industry. It's basically how you accept it, you know, it is the developer who actually has to accept, you know, whether he's going to use monopur, he's going to use uh, uh, multi, or he's going to use, uh, you know, mono. So, uh, Yes, uh, module manufacturing is nothing but an assembly and uh, as Anand was also mentioning that you know we need to cover up monopur. Uh, see, uh, today we have seen that you know China 60% has already moved to monopur man manufacturing. However, in India today also uh, multi uh, manufacturing, you know multi use of multi modules has been uh, you know prevailing. Reason, very simple, I think you know our uh, previous sessions we uh, you know all the developers have covered 
because basically when you go to lenders, uh, you know, in fact, uh, I, I recall, you know, uh, Mr. Bimal Jinder from SV SoftBank, one of the biggest developers, he mentioned this, you know, it is when, you know, we talk about uh, upgradation, you know, when we talk about Monopark using all the latest technologies, basically it is the lender who has to approve it. And with the kind of, you know, uh, reverse auction pricing coming out with 2.44, I don't think it is uh, possible. Possibly, you know, we'll have to give some time to industry that, you know, the pricing because of economies of scale will come down and match the multi levels and then possibly, you know, it will be monopoly all the way. But today, I think with the Indian scenario, multi has been the major player. But as far as manufacturers are concerned, I think adopting monopoly is not a big deal because it is only the change of sell. I don't think anything else is changing in the bill of material. So I think, uh, yes, uh, all the manufacturers in India today are geared up to, uh, to manufacture uh, monopoly modules also. And uh, uh, yes, they are upgrading and it is not only the raw materials, it is also the equipments, you know. Any change of bus bar changes your uh, tower. In fact, uh, I can tell you that, you know, uh, the industry has seen, uh, you know, China today, which uh, used to be the, which is, uh, used to be, you know, doing the tapping only manually. So, from manually, we have seen so semi-automatic. From semi-automatic, we are today already at automatic level and in automatic level also, we are trying to see that how we can optimize uh, you know, artificial, artificial intelligence and machine learning. Today people are doing optical inspections. No more there are visual inspection happening in life. These are all optical inspections happening. EL, you know, people used to have 2 megapixel cameras. Today people have a continuous <coughs> megapixel camera. The extrapolation of an image can be done far, far better and you can capture micro cracks, nothing like, you know. So, so definitely Indian industry has catch up. And uh, yes, as far as leadership is concerned, definitely uh, still there is a lot of uh, you know, investment needed in R&D. Uh, so yes, uh, technology is, uh, is, is, you know, we, we in India is definitely gearing up with that. Um, yeah, sorry, sorry. Yeah, just adding on to what Mupinder said, uh, certain good things, certain bad things, right? China is top on the technology. Uh, for one simple reason that the Chinese government run a program called Top Runner, which is uh, uh, designed to reward a better technology. Yeah, so they give a better feeling tariff, they give a quota. So the industry is incentivized, and you know they feel encouraged to go and you know get into that. But when you come into Indian situation, uh, we don't have a, a incentive for a better technology. Uh, the only incentive the industry gets uh, is you get lower price, you get the business. So that really doesn't encourage the technology. Go and talk to anybody today, any developers. Uh, talk about you know mono, talk about uh, mono, talk about poly. Ultimately, they will see that if I go with mono or if I go with mono part, how much is my BOS reduction? Correspondingly, how much is my overall IRR? It's just a question of worksheets, right? Mm -hmm. You have one worksheet with poly and you know slightly higher POS, you have another worksheet with monopoc with slightly lower POS. What is the bottom line? Whichever fits in, they just go in. You know, so that doesn't really incentivize. We only do it because the price comes down. Uh, I think sometime uh, middle of or early last year, mono prices and multi prices came very close. So Everybody jumped into mono, you know, not because people loved mono, just because the pricing was attractive. And uh, we are now in a situation where multi has started going up. And uh, simple reason is, you know, a lot of manufacturers in uh, China has moved to mono and monopur. Not even mono, actually, all moving to monopur. So for a couple of months, there were a lot of capacity available. So we started getting nice prices. Now capacity is getting constrained, the price has started moving up. Uh, hopefully one day you know that gap will come closer and the industry will end up adopting. Now this is one, one thing about it. But the second word of caution about the industry is that it's, it's a very dynamic and a very fast industry. You, know, you have no patience. Normally you bring out a new product, it goes through a validation process. You know, you, you take it through a field uh, uh, you know, do some study, you know, not just lab. Whatever it is, you take a car, you take anything, any machinery, you don't jump into mass production. 
our industry is you know in such a tearing hurry that you know the moment something happens you know you start mass producing and some element like LTI will come then slowly you know people will caution and then yeah the correction happens but then at, at a cost of couple of gigawatts which is already in the market same thing happened a couple of years back you know you would have heard about PI you know the, everybody jumped in I think they, they removed the transformer from the inverter because uh, it was cost saving and the PID started and the correction did happen fortunately but by the time the correction happened you know you, you have a lot of generation loss you know, if you really see the quantum of uh, generation loss quantum of you know cost of correcting uh, I think it's still worth to go through the validation process uh, like it or not because of our own uh, you know uh, compulsion to make the cost work somehow we are going through that phase with China validating and we adopting it as a later stage.